Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 15 of We the Revolution. So, I know who we have before us, and this is like another victim of our actions, I guess. First, let's read the news. Three against one. Your spy is talented, but even he was unable to leave unscathed when faced with three experienced English agents. Consider the draw this time. The trio are dead, but Ramel is seriously injured. Don't underestimate danger when it appears right under your nose. Oh no. Well, I'm glad Ramel is okay. So they were English agents. What could they have known about Ramel? I'm sorry that you got injured. But why is it affecting, affecting my reputation? Oh, I don't know. The defendant is young officer Gérard Boutin. Strong evidence suggests that he killed the former Archbishop of Paris, Jean-Baptiste Gobel. Yesterday afternoon, in the victim's place of residence, a pistol shot was heard. Neighbors entered Gobel's room immediately and found a young man with a smoking gun in his hand. The victim was lying on the floor with a hole in his chest. They called the guard immediately as the young man refused to put the murder weapon away. Due to the position of the victim, the crime scene was attended by Commander-in-Chief François Henriot himself. As the latter entered the room, he noticed that Boutin had finished loading the gun and was ready to shoot again, this time intending to kill himself. Henriot engaged in negotiations and after almost 20 minutes was able to convince the officer to lower the weapon. Guards immediately grabbed and incapacitated the murderer before leading him away to jail. During a short interrogation in his cell, the defendant remained silent. Henriot was present during this attempt to obtain information, which seems strange to me, but he is the commander-in-chief, so he can do as he pleases. Unfortunately, an incident took place. After the investigators left, one of the guards returned to the cell, threw himself at the defendant and kicked him several times, shouting, What do you know about Robespierre? What do you know about the commander? I try to avoid rumors, but one piece of gossip could be crucial to this case. Monsieur le Judge is probably unaware, like most Parisians, that it is said young Boutin is Gobel's illegitimate son, the very same who has been the talk of the town lately. If that is true, we are dealing with both a tragedy and a mystery. Why would a son kill his own father? I have not been able to determine the truth. Perhaps you will. Oh no. He wanted our help and we didn't give it to him. But, I mean, he could have left. Great. I mean, I don't really know what else I could do than sentence him to death. Because he murdered someone. He murdered an enemy of ours, but he murdered someone. There's not a lot to choose from here, but we have only one mistake to make. And we have not enough points to ask our mentor. So what could be an extenuating circumstance here? So I guess the pistol must have been the method. Why is the gunshot wound disappeared already? Huh. Maybe those were linked? Hmm, assault on the defendant. Could that be an extenuating circumstance because he was attacked as well in prison? Silence under arrest. Was that a method too or was it his personality? Let's go with personality. Let's see. Yes. So the suicide attempt. Was it his personality or could it be an extenuating circumstance as well? Maybe it's his, per his personality. Now it could also be a method. So how is the commander... Uh, how is Henriot connected to this? Is it maybe... Is it an extenuating circumstance that he... Did what? Exactly. Or was he part of a method? I guess it was the method maybe? Oh no, well then it must have been the extenuating circumstance. So all three of those are methods or are either method or an extenuating circumstance. So what about the assault? Don't really understand what the method means anyway. Maybe... Okay, I think I'm gonna put this to the extenuating circumstance. Because he tried to take his life. Cause, so it means that he must know that he did wrong. Maybe that's it. Yes. Okay, so the only things left are the extenuating circumstances. Nice. We did it. You know, I do feel sorry for him. I mean, his mother died. Maybe he just wanted help. But I think I still have to decapitate him. Because he murdered someone. We would like the defendant to state his name. 
Gérard Boutin, son of Jean-Baptiste Cobel. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Summon the witness. Please introduce yourself. In case anyone here has not recognized me, my name is Francois Henriot and I am Commander in Chief of the National Guard. Oh, hey, Henriot. Hey, buddy. Well, I guess it would be strange to ask him how he got to the scene of the crime. Although, maybe not, but still, he's our ally, so I guess he might have had a close look on, sun, on the sun. So, I think I want to know how he was able to convince him. How are you able to convince the defendant to surrender? We had a long talk. About what? I told him that dishonoring the military uniform by killing himself was a greater crime than what he had done to Gobel. And that convinced him? He is an officer. You have never worn a uniform, so you would not understand it, but he has deep respect for the army. Yes, that convinced him. What dealings do you have with Citizen Robespierre? Oh no. Is he... No. I'm... No. Did you send in the guard who attacked the defendant? Do not be ridiculous. The man was acting independently and he will be punished for it. How? I have not decided yet, but it is interesting that you are more concerned about a hot-tempered guard than a murderer. You can stop with her insinuations. Has any guard ever sh shown such insubordination before? No, never. Things like that do not happen under my command. Henriot, why are you so mean to me all of a sudden? Is this just because we're acting like we don't know each other that well? Or is there something wrong with you? Are you going to stab my back too? Like everyone will? And yet he did, it just when a prisoner could have information concerning yourself that he should not have had. Oh. I will not comment upon such absurdity. Oh no. Was it this guy who bet him up a spy of Robespierre? Maybe Henriot is still at our side. Why did you reload the weapon? Because he wanted to kill himself, isn't that obvious? Why did you keep silent in the cell when the guards asked you questions? Because all of a sudden many important figures became interested in me. I was visited by citizen Hébert and later Henriot came in with the guards. What does that have to do with anything? Each of them asked if my father had told me something unusual before my death, anything that shocked or frightened me. And did he? The revolution is not yet over and you can only promise me, Monsieur Le Judge, that you will take care of my mother. You told me that she's dead. It is not up to judges of this tribunal to make promises of that kind. Tell me where she is and her homeland will take care of her. Didn't you tell me that she died? Do not say, then, as you wish. I'm really confused here. He told us that his mother died, right? What happened? Did you not see the wound in his chest? Rather, what happened before the murder? I came to my father, who had more important things on his mind than his own bastard. What was the tone of the conversation? It was cold. No, I think it is better to say icy. My father had a grudge against me. Why? Because I had turned to others with my problems and that caused him trouble. He had just started a new jap chapter in his career. When did the shooting take place? After a short conversation. It was fast. To me, he became nothing more than a piece of meat and no different than an enemy on the front. How else could one treat a father that regards his son with such contempt? Oh, well. Well, I guess it's because his son was used against him. But I don't even know. I, I have to decapitate him. He did wrong. He murdered someone. How could you squander your military career so easily? How could I serve my nation while living with the knowledge that I have been disgraced? Are you referring to the rumors? I am referring to my father who had not once even hugged his son. I am referring to my mother who is dying, waiting for the love of her past. So she's not dead? Did I remember wrong? I could have sworn he said that she was dead. And this is more important to you than your life and your service to the nation? Are you saying, Monsieur Le Judge, that something can be more important than one's family? The nation! The guillotine! <laughs> Perhaps that is why I would rather die than live among you, among the people who have created the sick world, and all the more so since my family has been used for dirty political games. That is true, though. 
Please explain the rumors of you being the Archbishop's son. What rumors? Everyone knows the truth by now anyway. Do you want me to exaggerate it and present some dramatic details so the cattle can have some fun? We're not animals. Uh, yeah, you are kind of. I mean, seriously, who wants another round on the guillotine, huh? It's you. Why did you not tell the truth when these revelations were disclosed? I swore to my mother. That was the only reason I needed. Did you want to take the secret with you to the grave? That would have been best. A family's secrets should not be discussed and mocked by outsiders. Are you talking about us again? Will you not defend yourself? I already have. By shooting my father, I defended both my own honor and that of my mother. Now I will die with dignity. Uh -huh, I guess you will. So this is another case of someone that we nudged to do the wrong thing. If we had left him alone, he would have never had the idea to come back or something, right? Because he wasn't looking actively for his father. And then we started spreading the rumor and finding him, and now... ah, he's guilty. He killed someone. He's guilty. Sorry. Our way to the top is paved with heads. Did the defendant confess to the crime? Well, yeah, he did. Who reached the crime scene first? Was it Henriot who was there first? I don't know. What pushed the defendant to commit murder? The victim... The victim's antipathy. Did the defendant confirm the rumors about the victim's paternity? Yes. <sighs> Let's go with Henriot. I don't know if that's correct or not, if it's just a guard patrol. But Henriot oh, was there early in the picture, I think. He is guilty and will end on the guillotine. He is not worthy of the uniform. Bring him here, I'll sort the bastard out. No, shut up, people. Okay, it was true. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I have such a good reputation. Yes. Nice. To the guillotine with you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't really know about Henriot, though. I don't want to hold a speech. Let me die quickly. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna go home. Maybe I should work. Oh yeah, my family liked that. Maybe we should support the construction of the statue. I know. I know, father. I'm sorry. Oh, we have three points. We can... Ha! The statue has reached another level of development. Yay! Nice. Oh, Ramel is wounded. He's taking over a section. Wait. I will go... I will... Oh no, we can't afford that. Well done. Let's talk him out of there. I think withdrawn was working with aggression. Let's reveal one. No opinion. I think no opinion could be manipulated, right? Or aggression, my list tells me. Yeah, let's go in with all aggressive. Oh, well, it works. Blah blah, we already know that. Okay, you're free to go, Clovis. So, you are not going to take over my section. Hmm, so he can't do anything because he's wounded. Is there anyone else? Oh wait, I think I should... 
should, I should make some peace here. So, who our monument is done. Almost done to half. So, we have the political salon now that we unlocked before. I don't use that. I don't use my those buildings a lot, I realized. So, what's this? The printing house enables actions against the Muscadines and the Revolutionary Patrol. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's spend more time with the family, because we got the points. Though maybe that was a mistake, because now we have to intrigue. Let us start with rumors that could disturb Robespierre's impeccable reputation. We will use Hébert's words and suggest that Robespierre unofficially supports the corrupted clergy. Let Hébert's paper, Le Père du Chesne, make a few suggestions that the church bought Robespierre and paid for this support. We want to hear whispers on the streets claiming that, in this case, overthrowing the idol would be a good thing. So we could either... Due diplomacy. David will try to convince the local bourgeoisie to, to consider the alliance, even though they are terrified of it. Clovis will blackmail a few priests by threatening them with the guillotine, convincing them to spread the rumors. And Ramel, disguised as a priest, will spread rumors about the alliance between the church and Robespierre. You know what? Let's send Ramel because he's injured anyway. He can't fight. <laughs> Let's go, Ramel. Ooh, 100% chance of success. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Today we only have several minor cases to deal with. Oh, okay. What? The tribunal is the revolution's enemy, a fishwife yelled. Nothing relaxes Paris' citizens like demolishing a symbol. This time they took their frustration out on the politician of seats, your workplace. Oh, I think we already read that one. Ah, oh, well, those rumors again. But still, look at that. Okay. So, National Guard Lieutenant Louis Dolbeau accepted a bribe, a gold watch from Gauthier du Fresne. The latter was arrested because he was caught riding around Paris drunk and assaulted another driver with whom he was arguing on the street. No, he shouldn't be set free for that because he is a guard. He should protect people. We have learned from reports that citizen Michelle Menard, a postal worker, has been opening and reading letters. We found a significant amount of money in her apartment. She surely would not have been able to save that much with her modest salary. This is clear evidence of her collaboration with foreign agents. Okay, well that does not look good for you. During a march in support of the National Convention, Jean-Charles Bernier was standing at the corner of the Place de la Révolution. Witnesses and members of the guard confirmed that he was yelling, Le Roi Soleil shall return. No comment needed. Oh, I think this is like the Sun King and that was Louis. Um, well, still, it's his political opinion and I once didn't kill someone for that, so... Hmm. While selling a one-horse cabriolet, Lionel Bettencourt did not mention that the lower part of the vehicle was rotting due to negligence and rot. The unfortunate buyer demanded a refund, but that bastard slammed the door in my face. Uh -huh. oh well. It's not innocent. Godfroy Ouvrat, a young, a young craftsman, made a few minor repairs at the house of Mr. and Mrs. Aubergenois and then had intercourse with the landlady. <laughs> Mr. Aubergenois was not at home. Upon leaving the house, Ouvrat stole a fountain pen and a golden locket. We request punishment for both lovers? Oh, well. Um, so I guess I'm not going to punish him for the affair, but he did steal something. Although, on the other hand, I guess he wouldn't have been paid. He did steal, though. <laughs> A group of women waiting in line for water from a fountain started arguing. Things quickly became physical. The women who participated in the fight were Dignot, Gaume, Besnard, and Delcroix. The last was allegedly knocked to the ground and badly kicked. So they all deserve to die? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was... No, I don't know. I wouldn't decapitate someone for a fist fight or something like that. 
not all of them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm really wondering when I will get rid of him. I don't really remember what that case was where he was so... Oh. Do you want to keep being hungry? Do you wish to continue witnessing the bribery among those who rule us? No! We must get to Robespierre! Tonville will save us! Tonville! We want bread! <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So no opinion was aggression, for sure. I guess attached was manipulation, right? Yes. Let's spend one point. Oh, more manipulation. Ooh. The committee became entangled in bribery and treason. Who else can cut the Gordian knot, if not the guardian of the law? All the criminals and traitors within the committee will tremble out of fear for Prosecutor Tonville. Nothing can be hidden from us. Denton decided to sacrifice himself and make room for Tonville. Are you going to support him too? Okay. So I wonder, I mean, those were three perfect answers. Why weren't they... Okay, maybe there was no emotion more than intrigue to be had with them. Well, that was a success. Ooh, he's scary. <laughs> I guess he's angry. I think one of our family it is will die. It time I pay attention to that judge of yours. Oh no, our second child will die. Or maybe not. Oh well, I think if I think if Bernard is murdered now too, I think our wife will I don't know, kill us. And then herself. Ah <sighs> oh well. Okay, well then, let's let's do that. Ooh. Oh no, you seized the printing house. The available actions, okay. Oh no, everyone's wounded. No! You have to fight, Jack. Okay. Well, I guess there's nothing else that I can do. He's wounded, and I guess he won't be able to fight. I guess I could move you there, but... <clears throat> what can he do now? Can he flee? No. Well then, let's intrigue. Mm-hmm. What? What? What just happened? Okay, that was a success. It is time to drag Tinville out of the shadows. Concealed maneuvers are Robespierre's specialty. The crowd must believe that Tinville will restore order in the Committee of Public Safety. The convention will follow it blindly, as they find the streets even more terrifying than Robespierre. What about this? Oh no. Francois Chabot and Claude Bazir, loyal friends of Danton, were arrested today at Robespierre's request. We apparently succeeded at provoking Robespierre to fire warning shots. I doubt that Chabot and Bazir will be taken to court quickly, as it is far more probable they will be kept in prison to soften Danton. We must make another move fast. The convention should tell Robespierre that he is going too far. That should frighten him. In the dead of night, Clovis and a group of muscadines will arrange the flight of the two prisoners. The muscadines will probably treat this as some form of entertainment. Most importantly, we must deal with evidence against them. Without it, Robespierre will not be able to convict them. You know, this whole breaking them out of prison is a bad idea because that makes it that that makes them look guilty. If that comes out and if they make a big story out of that, that makes them look even more guilty, and this won't do us any good. I suppose Robespierre won't give a flying F about 
what the convention tells him because I guess he's frightened. I guess he's frightened of us and I don't know if a convention really is able to frighten him. So I suppose we're going to send Ramel again. Oh, poor Ramel. He got so badly hurt because of us and now he's got to do all the work again. So I guess it's a good idea to look for the evidence that might incriminate those friends and... If there's no evidence about it, then there is no conviction. So let's go with espionage. Okay. Well, then let's end the day. Well, everyone wants him dead, so I hope he's guilty. <laughs> Ooh. Horace Laval, a famous fencer, wants to teach us art at a private school. Oh, we can't even do it. a private school that will be based in one of the sections of Paris. However, even the most prominent names cannot be sure of meeting the financial needs of local officials. Laval came to you when the employees of City Hall asked for too high a bribe for all the required documents and permits. He does not want to give you any names as he is unwilling to stigmatize the officials, but he believes that the support of a judge will be enough to convince them to take a smaller, more fitting token of gratitude. I don't know if I really would have wanted to do that, even if I had the points. Well, who are you? He's accused of counter-revolution- Oh no, and- Oh no. Great. Well, I hope you really did something bad, because I don't- mm. Denis Decoin is a 41-year-old writer and journalist from the impoverished aristocracy and is currently working as the editor-in-chief of the Liberté Journal. At first, the paper was hugely popular among Parisians and radicals for pointing out the need for radical political and social changes. However, it recently underwent a reorientation and the paper has started publishing articles, uh, publishing articles that criticize the revolutionary authorities. After the Quan published a piece about the Committee of Public Salvation, one of its representatives, Jean-Pierre André Amar, accused him of having illegal sources of revenue and being engaged in hostile propaganda, funded by the counter-revolutionaries. De Quan was allegedly writing articles that discredited the authorities of the revolution, commissioned by aristocrats who have left the country. The accused received this money through Madame Joanne Casta, who sells expensive dresses. Madame Casta testified to this during her own trial in front of Judge Amar, where she was accused of espionage. Witnesses also admitted that the journalist frequently visited Madame Casta under the pretext of buying something for his wife and that they always met at the back of the store. The investigators who searched for Dequan's house have, find, uh, have found a box hidden under the living room floor. Inside were 7,000 francs corroborating Madame Casta's statement. So, it seems like he was bribed to write um, counter-revolutionary articles. So what did she testify? Article published in Liberté, scandal in the Committee of Public Salvation. Is its present Monsieur Amar taking bribes for issuing certificates of civism? So she testified, so the, the seamstress testified that it was true. Oh, well, this is complicated, but I guess I need to decapitate him anyway, or I will be very unpopular. Oh, well. Oh, no, and I have no points. Mm, great. Well, then, we have only one mistake to make, and there is a make, and there is a trap. So cash in a hidden box is probably the... Is that an evidence? Because it's not lying before us. Wait. The investigators who searched the Quan's house found the box. Well, they found it, so this should be evidence, right? The article in Liberté is definitely in evidence, because that's lying before us. Yes. Received from the store is also... was also part of the evidence, right? Yes. Counter-revolution was probably the reorientation of the Liberté, right? Yes. Cash in a hidden box, I'm gonna put this to evidence, because... Although, no, maybe not. Oh! So, what else could have been counter-revolutionary here? Popularity among Parisians was probably the method. What? Oh, damn it. Great. 
we are we will have a problem now because now I guess we will find out what is ha what's happening when we don't make the right connections because we can't be saved by our mentor now we have zero influence points I guess Joe and Casta was the method what how oh great state your name please I am Denis de Croix, editor-in-chief of the Liberté, journal, journal and loyal citizen of Paris. Citizen de Croix, you are accused of spreading counter-revolutionary propaganda for your own financial benefit. Those accusations stem from a plot conjured up against me because I have revealed the wrongs within the Committee of Public Salvation. The architect of this attack against independent journalism is none other than Jean-Pierre André Amar, the representative of the committee. Oh, I have some questions to ask, still. Why did Liberté all of a sudden start criticizing the authorities? In the past, you wrote about them in glowing terms. There was no sudden change. I have only criticized them in justified cases. It is my duty as a journalist to inform people whenever the authorities are abusing their power. By justified, you mean paid for by political en enemies of the revolution? My readers are paying me, not politicians. Damn it. Is he innocent? If I set him free, it wouldn't do much harm. Because I have a bit of a problem. Although, no, I, I can't choose against him anymore. Damn it. If I would have gotten some question about how he got the money from Jean Casta or something, that would have been interesting. But I don't have that. I suppose I won't get him innocent in this one question. Who hired you to attack the representative of the Committee of Public Salvation? There was no commission. I found out that Amar had demanded a bribe from Fabienne Roel for issuing him a certificate of citizen, even though Roel fully deserved it for being an active supporter of the revolution. How did you learn this information? From Roel. He came to the paper himself to tell that story. Can Citizen Roel confirm your account? No, he refused to pay the bribe, so Amar did not issue his certificate. This led to Roel's arrest and execution for being an enemy of the state. That's how Amar operates. So an enemy of the state who was facing trial came to you and asked you to smear a public official? That is not how I see it. What is your interpretation then? An honest innocent man was desperately seeking help in his fight with a corrupt bureaucrat. Damn it. Oh no. It's always hard for me with those counter-revolutionary cases because seriously it's like he he did nothing wrong. He he's just a newspaper. But I still have to decapitate him now. I can't let him go free. Although on the other hand No, you know what? I have to send him to the guillotine. I'm sorry. It's what the jury wants. Oh, I feel so bad. I'm sorry. On the other hand, I could just... On the other hand, I'm just so popular right now. And this is this will be the third time that I would oppose the jury. Although, I... I don't know. Could I lose so much reputation that I would be in the negative again? I wouldn't even lose a lot when I... If I set him free. You know what? Based on those questions that I just asked, I don't think he's guilty. Let's just go with it. Let's just set him free. <sighs> Everyone will hate me. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Everyone will hate me. Um, did, the conf did the defendant confess to the crime? Oh, <laughs> I suppose no. Was it a counter revolutionary? Probably yes. What was found in a box hidden? It was money. Dequan had recently bought many dresses. Where did he get the money? Oh no, he exchanged the dresses for a newspaper. I don't know, let's go with newspaper advertisements, why not? How did the accused explain the possession of such a large sum in cash? Maybe he saved it? Or maybe he inherited it, who knows? Let's go with inherited. Maybe, maybe we guessed correctly. Everyone will hate us. The judgment for Denis Dequan is not guilty. Take the defendant away. You better be grateful to me. You believe the enemy of the Republic? Yeah, Tinville. Can't you see the traitor? 
<laughs> I didn't see it. And him on the guillotine. Nope. It doesn't matter what we have to say. Yeah, I guess. But next case again. Okay. Ooh, still did a good job. Nice. And still 17 reputation. <laughs> oh no. Enemy at the courthouse. Yeah, I know people. I know. I'm sorry. I'll do better the next case. So we're gonna go home. Don't really know why I should go to a gambling den. Huh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? You know what? Let's construct our statue. Although on the other hand, I you know, let's let's host a dinner. If it's really I don't know I don't really know if that is really what if this really impacts our reputation or something. But our wife doesn't like a lot anyway, so Oh no. What the hell? How am I supposed to oppose this? You're going to take back my section, bastards. And now he's trapped in there. Well then I'm going to take this district. Okay, what's happening here? Henriot's betrayal. I knew it. So far, Desmoulins was not involved in the crusade against Robespierre. When people started whispering that he must be a coward, he decided to prove them wrong and announced his willingness to help eliminate the incorruptible. His Le Vieux Cordelier is a perfect place to publish an article claiming that Robespierre wants to bring the army to the streets of Paris. We should also use the rumors about political prisoners being maltreated tortured and sexually harassed. This should fill well with Cabot and Bazir being arrested and stimulate the imagination of the common folk. Okay, but what happened here? Hébert and some of his closest colleagues were arrested at noon. The same thing happened to Danton, who has long been a thorn in the side of Robespierre. They were accused of a number of crimes and tomorrow their trials shall begin. The arrests are proving that Henriot betrayed us. Henriot, I knew it! He reached an agreement with Robespierre and chose the side that benefits him most. Danton and Hébert are your allies, but you will not be able to save them both. You must choose which one to try and save. The other will most probably be tried by another judge and quickly sent to the guillotine. He will feel betrayed. Remember that. What one can view as betrayal among allies, another will call climbing the social ladder. Something normal. No. No, 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 no. Oh, what is this game doing to us? I knew it. I knew that Henriot was acting strange and I knew it. Wife, once again, this was all your doing. You brought Henriot to our dinner table and sweet-talked him before I could even... Ah! I helped him. I defended him when his when this rumor came out that he was abusing his family or something. I helped you and now you're stabbing my back like everyone will. Oh great. Mm. Tomorrow you will try Danton and tomorrow you will try Hébert. You know Danton has been a longer ally to us. Danton has been our ally for a longer time. I mean it was hard. He was one of our enemies before but so was Hébert I guess. Danton was an ally for longer than Hébert was and I will try Danton. I don't want to no. <laughs> Uh, this is horrible, 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 horrible. So, day 12, and now we are interrogating our ally and judging him. Of course I can't kill him, right? Okay, but we're gonna do this in the next episode. We are going to try our ally, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.